Hey everyone, this is Tom from Montac here, and we are back at it again with another match of the week. This time, of course, in the Pro Division. We've got Pro A, which means this is the elite of the elite, the best of the best. And we've got quite a treat today, because we have got, for the very first time ever, a matchup between APOC, three-time former Pro Champion from Romania, taking on Mini Smoke, former Pro Champion from Brazil. Both players have competed competitively for over a year, and both have had shots at the title. However, neither of them, of course, either of them, have faced each other at all during that entire time. And there was even a stage at some point where it was going to be such a huge matchup, where APOC was going to be Master Tactician taking on Mini Smoke for the Pro title. However, at the very last second, both players would lose preventing that matchup. But now, we are back at it, and we are ready to go with a... Uh, Brand new set of our cards. Let's see what happens. So we're gonna go straight into Starlet Sister Artemis, the new Starlet archetype being released. A uh, a deck that Apoc actually had a little of a hand in creating with us. Interesting to see how this is gonna go. Me Smoke, of course, now uh, expected to use potentially something like Bladeborn. Be pretty cool to see. But they have also shown interest in Grimstaff. So we're going to go into a Style Wrath and we're going to go into an Elena from the Artemis. Very nice there. Elena goes. Ooh, very nice. So, very question here is you could probably grab a Style, it could be Arachne. Arachne is their big beat stick. We'll have to see if that's uh, what they end up going with. And they brick, so they're going to go with an Elena again. That's pretty nice. So each time they do this Elena play, when it's played, it sacrifices itself, and you can add three cards from deck to hand. That would give them basically anything at all. Uh, so with uh, activating this combo twice, they're going to add a total of six cards from deck to hand, selectively. This is going to be interesting. Artemis is very interesting, of course, it's only at 1500, but it gives everything additional attacks. Plus Star Rash gives additional attacks. We're definitely looking at a very quick deck here in the Starlet Sisters. Secondary Elena is activating now. I'm going to go with Arachne from hand. Arachne is currently at 700, I believe, because there's only one Starlet counter in play. And that's what dictates the actual current power level. It starts at zero and then gets 700 for each Starlet counter in play. Starlet Wrath adds one counter to itself per turn. So we'll be looking at potentially 700 right at the bat. Hopefully it can increase a little bit more with the aid of some Serenity. But let's see, looking to see if there's any responses from Mini Smoke. It seems there are none. Goes 700. There we go. Okay. Three attacks each. So if this was them going second, this would be lethal this stage. Six attacks in total. Let's see what else APOC can cook up. Going Herald, discarding it now. So that will fill the conditions for Rapture Dragon, which is a board wipe that prevents. Uh, Basically, it takes out everything except Divine types, and look for Apoch, their entire deck is Divine, except for that Fair Rex there, so we'll see if he's actually going to keep that, if he's going to discard it. I have no idea what Me Smoke is wearing, to be honest. I would think Grimstaff, but he's not doing very much in this current situation. So we're going second Herald. Getting his health up. I wonder if he's going to go into 8th or red. Here we go, let's see. So adding a lot of cards into hand, not as big of a problem. Potentially he might be adding his entire deck to his hand, which was not a good idea if you're trying to use Serenity, but we'll see. Okay, going to draw 4 cards off of Starlust. Of a uh, star thruster. Hmm. Trains of a feather. What kind of deck is he building? This is very unusual. So I guess we'll be looking at probably Dragon Star, a little Starlet Dragon at this stage, as a complete deck. Ooh. Let's see. 
So he's looking to add almost his entire deck to his hand. Doesn't that mean that his Serenity will be countered? So Serenity is a card that Starlet have, which basically add additional counters to itself by... Um, basically give additional counters to itself, and then those additional counters can be removed to keep a monster you have in play where it would normally perish. So generally people do this to... Generally they use this to buff Arachne, which gives it to 2800. And we're going to impose. Imposing Tiberius, apparently. So Tiberius is good to go. Tiberius is not additional attacks to everybody, it's only for itself. Interesting. So we've definitely gone heavy into the additional attack stuff. Entering turn 2 of the game. Once we hit turn 11, it will be sudden death where a single wound is lethal. In the meantime, we've got plenty to entertain us as we are looking at 9 attacks on Apoch's side. And me smoke with a roll of two, they're gonna to have to come up with something immediately. Ooh, Oskip is a fantastic play here. So Oskip what it does is it can board wipe the enemy by giving itself to the enemy afterwards, and that will prevent Apoch from gaining health. So Apoch's gonna to need to respond to this absolutely immediately. So Royal Blessing is going to activate. Okay, so that's going to give him a token of 1,000. This is any response. If he doesn't respond, he's going to lose his entire board. He can't play Start Serenity. We've got a 1,000 monster there. Okay, Plasma Guard on Tiberius. So we're going to protect the Tiberius here. That is an interesting choice. So what Plasma Guard is, it protects it from perishing for the rest of this turn, which is quite nice. However, I would have expected you to use that on potentially Arachne. However, protecting Tiberius is unusual. The board wipe should still be a very good idea. I'm going to have to see if he uh, chooses to take the, uh, the board wipe. Just waiting now. See what he's gonna do. Okay, it looks like he's not gonna do anything. Okay, so they're gonna pass it there, giving it over. Why? Were, it's a very weird interesting. Why did they not decide to use it then? I think Mesa must have some sort of turn ender in hand then. Otherwise, that would be a uh, very unusual play. Racking up 1400, we got four attacks each. This is getting scarier and scarier. Dragon's Fire. Everything goes to Dragon type, that's really good for Apoch, that's going to give them additional attacks onto the Arachne and Artemis, which is just phenomenal right now. Tiberius is boosting all dragons in play by uh, addition, giving them additional attacks that Apoch commands. So that, that play actually helped, that play actually helped uh, Apoch quite a fair bit there with the onset of attacks. Then Curse Breaker. Okay, so let's see. So we're going to go Dragon's Fire into the Swordsman, which is going to boost all their guys by 300. Which is not bad, 1300, 2300. The 
But the issue is this is also an Apox turn, of course, so I just wonder what they're planning. I guess they can play Curse Breaker to go into another card. Maybe they can go into Descent of the Dragon. Kind of copy Apoch here a little bit. So they're currently calculating now we've got 14 attacks, Apoch is seeing if they've uh, got what it takes to out the Ossicup. Going to conflict. Roll is three. Going to conflict. Here we go. Artemis going into... We need the token. So this would be a good chance for me to get a quick conflict win here. That's where Savage Yield Shield comes down. Very nice play from Mini Smoke. That will control the board very nicely. So what Savage Yield Shield does is it blocks the attack and then ends the turn immediately, which will give Mini Smoke exactly what they need to activate that Ossikip as a primary uh, or a uh, priority. They also need a refill here, but then Ossikip is going to Oskip is going to activate, which will board wipe Apoch and then give him Oskip. Oskip, of course, will get the additional attacks, though. Also, a big thing with Oskip is while the whoever commands Oskip cannot gain health points. Viral mutation now from Mini Smokes. We're looking at potentially a mutated build at this stage. Uh, you'd have to wonder what they're going to go into, though. So we're going to grab a mutated titanoball baby, which is really good for searching tacticals, but it's not necessarily going to turn this match around quite at the moment, unless we see something uh, extra. What's the second card? We're going to go with mutated Aaron. Ooh. Quite interesting that mutated Aaron, of course, you've got the band chief Aaron as normal in the band archetypes. We actually have a mutated chief Aaron, which comes along a little bit later in the mutated archetype, which is used as a card that basically, during the play of the turn, you can select a monster that was played that turn and halve its power and give the remaining power to Aaron. So it's a, quite a good control strategy. We're going to go straight into mutated. How do they play Beast? Do they roll enough for Beast? Must have. We're gonna roll four. Okay, so beast is good. Oscar goes to zero, so that means that Miso can out their own Oscar quite easily. Nico Baby. Baby on play could sack a health to search for a tactical, which is going to boost all of their guys by 300 while forcing Apoch to discard a card from hand. Pretty nice, pretty nice. Really, really, really nice uh, playing here from Miso. Any tactical from their deck to their hand. Do we get a coconut hut? Another great choice from Mini Smoke, and they're going to slap it down immediately. Just confirming now that Bionic Beast is mandatory in this scenario as well as the baby. Which is really good at this stage. But discarding might not be so bad for uh, Apoch. A good discard of Ava would be, I think, a, an interesting idea. We'll have to see if he uh, picks up on that or if he thinks it's not a good idea. Going for Dragon's Fire instead. Interesting choice. I would think they could be trying to use up, uh, set up a... Supreme Dragon Conk play, but there's really no no telling. So we're getting response to Coconut Hut. They're gonna sack four to get rid of the hut. Now of course Miso can sack four at any time to get rid of that Starlet Wrath too. But they may be waiting their time until it gets a bit bigger with the encounters. But uh, it's still a very, very open game state at this stage. Also, they don't necessarily want to keep their health too low because they are running mutated. OK, 
Okay, so we're just gonna see what happens here. Hmm, what to think here? So, does he have the bare minimum? So he doesn't really have much. If if Apoc board wipes him at the moment, I believe Misfunk really doesn't have much at all to deal with uh, or respond, unless you've got some generic fighters. Ooh, Judge King question. I think it messes that directly, okay. So, Otsuka has been seeing a lot of play in Pro A recently with a new change that it can board wipe and then give itself to the enemy, which is quite interesting. Um, it's acting as a, a really good just answer to a lot of big strategies. Uh, and it also stops the player from gaining health, which is quite a huge deal considering a lot of decks run cards that require health loss to out them. So, like, with especially in this matchup, if you're looking at Start Wrath, it's an incredibly strong card if you leave it alone. And once you leave it alone, it's going to give, it's going to um, get additional attack after additional attack. Ooh. Interesting question for the judge here. Okay, so we're going to see now. In conflict. Ooh. That'll board wipe. Yeah, I will gain four health points. Yeah. Ah, yeah, so they're checking whether if the Rapture Dragon would give him health even though he had Oskip on play. That is correct. Alright, then they're going to pass it over. Four health gain for Apoc. Going to get a roll of two, which is going to increase the timer up to three on start rash, which means every single monster that Apoc plays gets an additional three attacks. Impose the Xerxes. So, like I said, Mismic doesn't have much in the asset. They're going to need something like Operator to survive this. This is already uh, basically lethal. So both of them are at four attacks. We've got eight attacks online. Mini smoke is in. Range for a shot. Let's see what happens. Is this match already over? Or has the Razor got something left? Going into Cursebreaker Swordsman. Cursebreaker Swordsman can go into either a Destroyer Sword or a Dragon card, which is quite nice. I think Descent of the Dragon would be great here, but Miswick may not be running that draw engine. I will say both players are playing incredibly well, and for a match that was this long to uh, to happen, I think it's definitely been worth the wait. We're going in for Titan Destroyer, so which will give it a bit of a boost. I'm sure Apox got the responses though. Apox would have a full hand there, which have stuff like Hammer Down, stuff like Rage Release, maybe even Outcast Axe. Oh, I love this! Starlet Amulet is going to select Curse Breaker. It means we may either sacrifice two health. Or shuffle it back into the deck. That is a very nice card right there. Paying two to keep it in play. Ooh. Of course, the health points aren't everything in Montech, but they are a huge resource system that you can use to deal with your enemy's tacticals uh, and their strong effects. The question is, does he have two star amulets? And if he does, why is he using them so quickly? I don't know. I think, I think Mismoke's got something. Going into conflict. Let's see what happens. Pa 
passing the turn to Mini Smoke. Mini Smoke has survived. Oh dear. Okay, this is getting very, very scary. Okay, so we got a roll of five on turn six. We are over halfway there to the sudden deaths area. I'm gonna go. Titan is such a scary play here because if they don't get what they need and they have to pass the turn back, they're gonna be left without that crucial defense. They are gaining health, but that won't matter when you're dealing with next turn. It'll be 10 attacks. Holy smokes, this is going to be nasty. Okay, let's see. Mini Smoke's got an interesting board. We're going to go with Bionic Beast, which is going to drop one card down to zero, which is quite nice. I wonder if... Mm, yeah, Mini Smoke's definitely being very cautious about sacking four for that Start Wrath, because that will put them very low in health. Uh, if I was in Mini Smoke's situation, I'd probably be looking to get the health up a little bit higher, and then try to get rid of the Start Wrath. However, the issue is APOC probably has a second copy, but at least I would have to start from scratch. Going to Curse Breaker again. So we've got... So Curse Breakers have multi attacks themselves. But the power is so low at 1450. I'm just not sure what it's going to do at this stage. I guess you can lose Titan for an aggressive play. But... Um, this is going to get very interesting. So they're, not, they're throwing away the Titan Destroy Swords. I do wonder what Mii Smoke is doing. I'm gonna go Viral Mutation. What are they comboing into? Holy smokes. They are digging deep for something. Apparently they didn't get what they needed. Of course, Viral will give them an extra 2 health, which will get them up to 8. Maybe, they, oh, they, maybe they're doing what I said. Maybe they're going to get the health so they can sack for Starlet. Four health is a lot of health to lose, though, considering you start the game with five. Before conflict, you got a response before heading into conflict. Mini Smoke obviously has something. Hmm. The good thing for Mini Smoke, of course, is they have now put the Curse Breakers into play, so they've got something on board as a. Uh, they've got a great. Um, foundation. So you're really good to get a lot of specific types in your Perish Pile because it means it allows you to have access to your synergies. Can you Dragons of Feathering in preparation state to sacrifice a class 5 or higher Dragon type monster to play a Dragon type monster from deck or Perish Pile. And we're going to grab the Invictus which will board wipe again and we're still in preparation which will give Apoch a further 3 health. However, this will allow Mini Smoke to get access to what I would say is Supreme Dragon Conqueror. So not the worst thing in the world. And with, with Apoch starting to run out of cards, this was definitely a very worthwhile play. We could also see a pass from Mini Smoke because they now have access to Conqueror. Yep, there's the pass. It's going to give it back to uh, Apoch. The reason that passing is not as lethal at the moment is that you can of course use your synergies on your enemy's turn as long as the condition is fulfilled and we do have Conk online and Apoch has a dragon in place so that is that is very very nice roll of two so that means of course Star is going to go up to a counter of four which means every monster he plays now will have a total of five attacks right from the get go gonna go second Xerxes holy smokes this is insane, we've got 10 attacks in total, 5 per Xerxes. Okay, we're just checking now that and Xerxes is not going to search. Apoch says there's no monsters left in deck, we're going to conflict with 10 attacks. Mini Smoke needs to respond now or they will immediately lose. Let's see what they've got. Bear Soldier, drop them both by 500. During conflict. 
So we're going to go Bear Soldier, which is going to drop both by 500. A very, very nice play there from Nice. Smoke. Very nicely done. So that will keep Bear Soldier alive. Very, very nice. So the reason Bear Soldier can be played on either player's turn is due to its specialty. Uh, while your enemy commands more monsters than you, during your player's turn, you may play this card from your hand regardless of class. If you do, all enemy monsters in play lose 500 power until they perish. It's a great defense and it acts as an incredible uh, last minute defense. In general. Okay, so we're going to go with a roll of two Xerxes into Bear Soldier. Using Descend of the Dragon, which will boost their guys by 300. We should get them both up to a total of 1600 with 10 attacks. Meeswalk's going to need to think of another way out of here. Let's see what Meeswalk does. Let's see what Meeswalk's going to respond with. We're going to go with Supreme Dragon Conqueror, which can pop the Xerxes. Yeah, so it can take it out because Xerxes is only protecting its non-asset monster specialties, but asset monster specialties can still take it out. Okay, so we're going to pass it back over to Mini Smoke, and Mini Smoke have a no time Supreme Dragon Conqueror 3100. Very, very nice. Roll the four. This game is not over yet. Going for baby. So Meesmoke is not looking to sack the health for that Starlet, so that's interesting. I would think that would be a very uh, optimal play here, but... Interestingly not. I also wonder from APOC, they haven't really gone into their Arachnes. They've gone into the first one, which got board wiped, but the second one is yet to really grace the field. And I just wonder if there's going to be any sort of change in that. Let's see. Well, before we got Savage Dual Shield, which is going to add self to the hand, which is going to boost everything also by 300. Yeah, Baby's going to boost everything by 300, including the Conk, which is pretty nice. And they're going to pay the four immediately to deal with Hut, not allowing Hut to get started at all. Very, very well done. Okay, so HUD is gone again. Does Mini Smoke retaliate with popping Starlet? Is a good question. No, we're going to go straight to Conflict. They could go second Dragons of a Feather here, I suppose, and grab the Rapture Dragon. Oop, nope, they're going to let it go. Okay, so we're currently at the eighth turn of the game. This is not going to be lethal, but it's not going to be, uh, it's not going to be nice either. So we've got Bear Soldier engaging Xerxes. And we're going to go Plasma Guard on the Xerxes, which will protect it. Interesting choice, interesting choice. Roll of five, getting a bunch of really nice rolls so far. And we've got a uh, couple more turns left. This means, oh my gosh, this is crazy! He's grabbing the Conqueror with the Cupid Specialty moving it, and Star Rats is going to tick up another counter, going to 5, giving each one 5 additional attacks, which means he has a total of 18 attacks in total, including the Conqueror he just stole! This is crazy. 18 attacks is more than enough to get the job done. This is going to be crazy. Conqueror going after the baby. Baby's gonna get Savage Jewel Shield. 
immediately defending. Gonna grab his Conqueror back. Very nice, very nice. And we've got a roll of six for turn. Mini Smoke looking very, very strong at the moment. Last turn for Conqueror if they don't regen. And they're gonna regen back online. Conqueror is back online. Mini Smoke is not giving up on this matchup, not one bit. Let's see what happens here. Before conflict, we could see a Dragons of a Feather. Dragons of a Feather, here it comes, so you know what this is going to be. I believe we are looking at, yet again, Rapture, Dragon, Invictus. Invictus will board wipe all non-divine, killing the Conqueror, the Bear Soldier, and the Baby, which will give Apoc another three health points they can use. Uh, one must wonder, though, are they going to go into Aethel Red? Aether Red, of course, being a synergy that, when played, you can sack 1 to 5 health, each health point sacrifice, you gain additional attack, and 1,000 power. That combined with Starlet Wrath, you'd be looking at, well, 6 additional attacks, plus a 6 attack monster. You're looking at 12 attacks, I believe, on that Aether Red. We'll have to see if that's where he's heading. And we're going into Sudden Death now, which means a single health loss, and Aether Red hits the field as expected. Aether Red will sack the... Uh, Five health points, bringing Aetherite up to a total of 8,300. Six attacks, plus another six attacks off, off of the, uh... Oh, snap. Hold on. Might be... Is it 13 attacks? So, we're looking at 12... It's going to be 12 attacks on Aethel Red. So we're looking at 12 attacks on Aethel Red, 7 attacks on Xerxes. We've got 19 attacks on total. Holy smokes. Let's see if Mini Smoke has got the out. Back and forth, back and forth. Let's see what Mini Smoke can do. Mini Smoke checking their second deck now. So let's be careful not to use too much as they don't want to go into a deficit against Apoc, someone who is very good at finishing the matches. But they're going to also have to make sure that they have enough to comfortably defend this and uh, make sure that this is not their last turn. So we're looking at now. Super Soldier is an option. <clears throat> Ooh, Arathor. Holy smokes. Arathor's going to be played. That allows them to grab a fighter from Perish if they want to. I'm just not sure what they're grabbing. From your deck or Perish pile. They're going to go to main deck. For a blow fighter. Fire types of perish ship, confirming Arathor is good to go. Let's see here. Don't have targets, so we're not going to grab anything from Arathor. Arthur is at 4750 looks at this stage. That is going to be very scary. But not really enough to deal with Aethel Red. Miso is going to need something else. War Gear is a great choice. Roll a 3 for turn. We're going to regen the guy, but... He will stay to 3300. Okay, so it's only 3300, but it still has 12 attacks. However, it's not big enough now to deal with Aerothor. at 5750. Apoc's going to have to see if they can bring out something. Here we go. This is it. Crunch time, hammer down the Arathor down to 2500. Mini Smoke's gonna need something to deal with this. 
Oh, it's gone. Holy smokes. We've got a total of 18 attacks in board. This is going to be it. Can Mini Smoke stop this assault? Going. Oh! Mutated Dragon. Mutated Dragon hits the board. Mutated Dragon is a little bit weaker, but this should allow them to have access to, uh, I would guess, Cavalion. Which is huge here, if he Cavalian. So Cavalian was a card commissioned to 4 APOC as the Master Tactician. If Mini Smoke drops this, this is going to be insane. Is it Cavalian? Is it Cavalian? Dude, that is the biggest fuck. Oh, we got Cavalian! We've got Cavalian! Oh, we've got Cavalian, boys. This is it. Cavalian in his play. It can play a non-asset, destroy a sword, dragon, or mutate a card from your perish pile. If you do, while this card is in play, its timer is removed. Holy smokes. This guy is insane. A Master Tactician card, first of its kind, is going to bring back the mutated... Oh, we're going to go for Baby, not Bionic. So Baby's going to search the deck for a tactical card. So you can grab a tactical from deck to hand. And it's going to boost Cavalian by another 300, making it 6,050. Just confirming now, same sort of... Okay, Cavalian is good to go. Mutated Mutation Pit is going to add self to his hand. So who was attacking it? That's a good question. So we're going to have the Xerxes engage the Cavalian. Very nice play there. And that will win Cavalian. That's corrosive. Both players take a damage. Which will give another 300. Okay, very nice. Mini Smoke survives with his opponent's own Master Tactician card. My goodness. The disrespect. This is crazy. This is crazy. And Aethel Red can't attack the same monster twice in the same turn as per the game rules. So, wow. Absolutely exceptional job there from Mini Smoke using that card. <clears throat> So they're going to have to go after Baby here. And there's a huge play there from Mini Smoke. Destroy Mutated once again, looking like a very interesting deck right now. Okay, so they're going to go after the Baby. Holy smokes, dear lord, he's going into Conquistador. That's going to double the power of his Aether Red, taking it to 6,600. This is insane, and it means that whenever Aether Red would perish next, they may instead send the Conquistador sword, as long as it's not a timer. Holy smokes, this game, man. This game is insane. How the heck is me so going to deal with this? Oh my gosh, wow, that was an incredible play. This is back and forth. 6,612 attack Aether Red versus 6,350. Mutation Pit can't pop as it's only non-synergy. So they're going to need another out. What do they have left to use? They've got more cards in deck, more cards in hand, but no cards in asset. Mini Smoke is back against the wall and they need to figure it out pronto. Man, that Cavalian was nice. I'm going to be honest. That was phenomenal. Oh, okay. We're going to go into the uh, adult. In response to the adult, we've got a thinking from APOC. Oh my gosh. I can't wait for this. This is going to be crazy. This is crazy. Because next turn, Aether is going to hit 13 attacks due to that um, start wrath. This is ridiculous. Okay, so just wait on APOC to respond. So 
So we'll play a second copy from the hand. Okay, very nice, very nice. The question is why? I'm not sure. It may be just to unbrick. There's gotta be some other plan here. Okay, so what's Misak doing? Could come down to 250 difference in power. 6600 versus 6350. This match, man, is just incredible. Passing the turn back. We are now in, 40 minutes in, roll of three for turn. Let's see what Mismo can do to stop this. If they lose Cavalian, this could be huge. They need to keep Cavalian alive and win this conflict against Aether Red, otherwise it is probably over. Going to impose Dragon Cupid, of course, Mismo can deny it. Allowing them to play Cupid here is not a good idea. They're going to take the damage, stopping Cuba from hitting field. Definitely the right decision there. Let's see. Weirdly, Apox said they didn't expect it, but I would think that you would always expect them to deny a Cupid at this stage, considering they are hanging on to their Apex here. Both players have full health now. Game remains close, and Mismo cannot deal with Starlet Wrath. I don't know if that would have been a huge deal. If they uh, popped it, but now. Oh my gosh, 13 attacks on Aethel Red. Gosh, this is crazy. Here we go. Starlet Mother Athena is dropped. It's a good card. It can be used to pop stuff, but it's not going to do anything against the Cavalian. Let's see if he falls for it. Okay, they're going to pop Boa. Okay, good. He remembers his own card. He will take care of the my, the adult. And he will reduce uh, Aetheret back down to six, uh, 12 attacks. And of course, Athena now goes to 7 attacks. Holy smokes! We've got two monsters are in and around that 5,000 range. This could be it. We're going in Aetherred over Adult first. Oh, that was such a bad play! No, wait! Don't do that! Mutated Bear Soldier! Is that. Wait, is Bear Soldier still left? Is Bear Soldier left? Is Bear Soldier left? Don't tell me he's done that. Wait, where's Bear Soldier? I can't send a second second. Is there a second copy? Where's the second copy? I need to put in Bear. There's no second copy. Is that GG? Hold on. We're looking at potentially a fourth from me, Smoke here. Are they conceding? Okay, that board is gone. Going for a game with Athena. And that is game. APOC wraps it up. Just over 40 minutes in. Incredible matchup there, so very well played. Well played from both players. Uh, I was looking potentially a bear soldier there, but uh, it did not actually happen. So uh, well played both players, though. Thank you guys for watching, and uh, I'll see you all later.